Mihai Chiksent Mihai is the author of Flow, one of the most popular books in the world, but also a man with one of the most popular names in the world because no one really knows how to pronounce it except me. I just did it, but I'm not special. I had to go through countless videos to find out exactly how to pronounce his name and go through a whole bunch of tutorials on it, okay? That's how complicated the name is. If you don't believe me, here's the full name right here on the screen right now. You try to say it and don't play back to hear how I said it, okay? Don't cheat, don't copy me because I did it on my own now guys in this book review slash summary i'm gonna go over all the details to this book the main three points to be honest and then also give you guys a bonus at the end of the video on top of that if you guys want to read this book for yourself and you want to do it for free we'll have a link down below for audible when you sign up for audible with my link you get two free books you can get this book and another book out there which you want and even when you cancel it you can still keep those two free books no problem no commitments and basically you don't lose any money but you do get two free books now i highly recommend if you want to get the second book i recommend reading mastery by robert green it's one of my favorite books by far but it's very long so you have to be committed to it but it is one of the best books i've ever read so far now if you guys don't know me my name is Tony bryson i'm an accountant and i upload videos on youtube every single day subscribe to the channel hit the bell so you get notified and do me a favor and smash that like button on top of that comment down below guys and let me know what books should i read next the year is almost over and I'm running out of books to read so please comment down below and let me know what book should I read next and let me know why because if you read it before you want me to read it I want to know what you liked about it also now when it comes to flow guys and what flow means flow is a state of mind or a state of being or a state of action where you are in complete focus over your task and time feels like it's literally flying for example look at Warren Buffett or for example look at you okay whenever you're doing something you really enjoy at work or at home or watching whatever you want to watch it feels like literally time flies because you're such in a state of focus where it doesn't really matter how time is going because time is relative to how you feel about what you're doing however if you're doing something you don't enjoy and you're not in a state of flow but often even 10 minutes seem like 10 hours and that's the difference between being in flow and not being in flow so the entire concept of this book is how to achieve flow not just through your work but also through your entire life and that sounds amazing to me except when i think about do i actually want to have life feel like it's just passing by like that in reality, that's not how it works, but I will show you guys exactly the three main parts of this book and what I really enjoyed about it. Now, the first topic I want to break down here is pleasure versus enjoyment. Now, Tommy, that sounds like the same thing, right? Pleasure, enjoyment, same thing. Ooh la la, potato, tomato, um, potato, um, tomato. I don't know how that goes, that same, but you know how it goes. So I guess we're good to go. Now, the main point is this, guys. When it comes to pleasure and enjoyment, they're very different in how uh, Mihai actually describes it in this entire book. I'm not going to say his last name again, okay? I did it correctly the first time. I don't want to mess it up anymore. Now, it took me three times to record this video, okay? Because I couldn't say that last name, so I won't even risk it right now. Now, the reason pleasure is so much different from enjoyment is because pleasure comes from sensory, okay? So basically, guys, okay, you might feel pleasure when you're doing you-know-what and when you're actually taking you-know-what, okay? But the concept is, by the way, I'm not saying those words, although you guys are adults, because I know that YouTube might demonetize me if I say, you know, the X-E-S word. There you go. You're... You can spell it backwards if you want and just turn it back around. But the concept is, guys, that pleasure you feel right there, one, it takes no effort. And often, when you do certain things that are pleasurous, like, for example, people out there that are addicts to you-know-what and, you know, like, taking and stuff like that i said that one but i'll bleep it out here but the thing is this okay guys um whenever you feel pleasure to those things often whenever you're done doing those things you kind of feel kind of horrible sometimes and the main reason is because you know that that pleasure you felt right there didn't really lead you to anything positive or accomplishing anything in your life you know because it really takes no effort to accomplish that type of effort sometimes just like you know taking something eating something doing something but in reality it doesn't really take that much effort but tommy you know when it comes to that um x e s thing well in, in actuality that's very important to a relationship so it's not just like pleasure um it doesn't really it's not really rewarding the answer is kind of but not really and here's why okay in relationships that go beyond 10 to 20 to 30, 40 years, that doesn't really matter as much as the entire relationship and how it actually is. You know, that stops mattering a long time into the relationship. So that's why I say pleasure. By the way, the reason you feel pleasure whenever you do that stuff is because 
evolution made it that way so you're actually more incentivized to actually perform that action to then lead to you you know having kids and passing your genes on to another person and that's how that works the difference now with enjoyment versus pleasure is that enjoyment is a state of concentration of focus but whenever you do something you actually get enjoyment from in reality that thing that you're actually doing pushes you towards accomplishing something and that's why when you're enjoying your work you kind of feel like oh my gosh i'm enjoying this and even after it you feel like oh my gosh i actually enjoy that i actually feel great the answer is it's because you're doing something that's actually helping you get ahead in life now that doesn't mean it only works for work. It also works for you just like waste, well not really wasting time, but like for example, like watching TV or doing like something like, you know, like getting a shower or like brushing your teeth. It works for all this stuff, but it's all pertaining to the results it gives you. And if you really want those results, if you don't really want those results, okay? Now, that's enjoyment, that's pleasure, and that's the difference. One is sensory and one actually is focused and takes effort and actually gives you something you actually want that will help you in the future. Enjoyment, pleasure, that's the difference. And I really like how Mihai actually broke it down in this video. Well, in the book review. Well, in the audio book that I read. Again, if you want to read that book, audio link, audible link down below. I don't know what's going on right now, but I can't speak. But there you go, audible link down below. Now, number two is basically what flow is and how do you go about accomplishing it and following those eight steps to get to flow. Now, the answer is this, guys. Have you ever played a video game? Maybe when you were a kid or do anything when you were a kid and it felt like, you know, you started playing this video game, maybe like at 10 a.m. or like 12 p.m. And then you keep playing over and over again. It's very challenging, but also very good. And you keep playing. And it's like, oh, my gosh, it's so awesome. The story is so great. And then by the end of your entire session, all you hear is, oh, David, Bob, Jim, Tommy, come down for dinner. Like the dinner is done. You've been there for like 10 hours. And it felt like literally 10 minutes because you enjoy it so much. But it's actually because you had a challenge that actually met your skill level. If it was too challenging, you would be like, okay, I'm not doing this. I'm going to tired. But if it was too easy, it would get boring. And that's why a lot of people like put down like um, Candy Crush and all these games on your phone. Most of them are not as challenging, and that's why most of the time you kind of put them away and they get very boring at times. It has to be challenging, and you have to meet your skill level also. Now, when it comes to the steps to accomplish flow, there are eight of them in this book, and I'm going to break them down right here, but not in full because, again, if I did what um, Miha did in this book, it would take me like around five hours to break all of them down. So I'm going to break it down really simple with one example or two here and there. Now, the first one is you need complete concentration to get into a state of flow. So, by the way, spoiler, okay? Humans do not multitask. We're not computers, okay? Now, here's what I mean, okay, guys? You might say, oh, you know, I'm listening to music and doing this over here. In reality, a person can only shift from one task over and over and over very quickly or maybe very slowly, depending on you. But in reality, there's no doing two things at the same time. Basically, if I was recording a video and do something right here, I would do this, then then this, and then this, but there's no like doing both of them. It's not possible. Research it, I did, and it doesn't work. That's why when you might be trying to multitask, you end up procrastinating and not really accomplishing anything. So number one, you need concentration to accomplish flow. The second thing is you need clarity in your goals and what you wish to accomplish with what you're doing, okay? And also, you also need immediate feedback. Now tell me, what does this mean? It means that if you're gonna begin a task, you wanna make sure you understand what is my goal, what's my reward, and what's my feedback to let me know I'm doing good or doing bad? Very important, okay? Now, number three is you need transformation of time. Whenever you start doing this, you'll start to see how time speeds up or slows down. If you see the time is speeding up and you kind of like don't even notice the time passing by, that's a good sign you're getting into that rhythm of flow because it means that they're so into it, so focused, that time seems irrelevant, to be honest. Now, number four is you need to experience intrinsic rewards okay now rewards aren't just like oh my gosh you know i did this and i got this i did this so they gave me a horse at work no it's not just that it means that when you're doing that task that job you're actually doing you feel an internal reward actually coming through for example if i make this video when I'm done making this video and I upload it, I feel great because I'm like, okay, someone wants to read this book, they found the summary to it, and now they might be motivated to actually start reading or something like that, and that all happened because I did this work, okay? So that's what internal motivation comes from. It's not like, oh, I'm going to make money by doing No, that doesn't matter as much, okay? Now, number five is 
the more you do it, you actually start to begin seeing an effortless and ease to that task you're actually doing. Now, what does this mean, Tommy? Well, you have to be careful. If the task is too effortless and too easy, it might mean that it's not challenging enough and eventually it will start to become very boring. And that's why you might have a job and you're like, oh my gosh, all day with this keyboard and this data entry, nine to five, I hate it. I'm, it might be because it's way too boring or it's way too difficult and it doesn't really meet what you actually need, which, which is basically something very challenging, but also on your skill level. Now, that does not mean you can't start upgrading your skill level step by step, but you have to start here and then keep climbing up and up and up. Now, number six is, there's a balance between the challenge and your skills. Now, I said this before, but basically it means that, you know, whatever you're doing, it needs to be challenging, but you also need the skill to actually, you know, compete against that challenge. Now, that means that if you're not challenging, well, you not have the skill yet to actually get that challenge, well, it means that you might have to upgrade your skills and then come back to that challenge. And the more you do that challenge, the easier it will get, and eventually it'll become boring. So that's why you constantly need to be moving up step by step. Now, number seven is action and awareness are merged. Now, what this means is, have you ever heard like an, like an author or for example, like a painter or a YouTuber say like, you know what, whenever I'm recording, it just feels like I'm not even talking. It feels like the person's here, like I'm here and someone else is doing all the work. Well, that's why, because you get into the state where the pen is doing all the work, where you're doing all the work, but in reality, it feels like you're not doing anything because you're so conscious and so aware to the point that it just feels like, okay, everything is just flowing. Now, last thing, number eight guys, basically, there's a feeling of control over the task. It means that whatever you're doing, you feel in control, but also not too in control because that's to be challenging. Remember that. So it feels like, hey, you know what? This is great. I'm in control, but if I stop looking or if I stop focusing, I might just fall off. And that's what flow is and how to get into it and the eight steps to actually accomplish flow. Now, number three and the last nuggets I found in this book, guys, basically, you know, life in life, well, basically in life, you need, um, an ultimate goal and also daily goals. For example, guys, everyone tries to separate, um, you know, leisure time, relaxing, watching a movie with work, and that's why they always feel like they're at times like attention. But the concept of this book is basically merging both of them and finding flow within everything you do, whether it's brushing your teeth, whether it's washing your hair, whether it's working on a task, like whatever it is, it's finding flow within all those tasks. And that's something he goes into detail on how to accomplish it in his book. Now, on top of that, guys, you know. Mihai went into a lot of detail. By the way, this is like 30 years of research that he's done, so I can't cover everything in an 18 minute long video. So I highly recommend, if you guys haven't done it already, go check out this book. I have a link down below for Audible. You can get this book for free if you want to. So there's no excuse whatsoever, okay? So get this book, check it out, because basically guys, this book has helped me accomplish flow with my work, with my gym, with my health, my wealth, my love, my happiness, everything. So that's the concept. That's what it'll do for you. So I highly, highly recommend this book. Mihai, Cheek Sent Mihai did a great job with this book. Again, I said his name perfectly and I'm not going to stop recording now because this is the second time I said it perfectly and that's the perfect way to end this video. And as always, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, like this video, really appreciate it. Also, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you get notified and if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, uno uno, just DM me on Instagram, Tommy Bryson. And before I go, if you want to see all the book reviews I've done so far, watch this video right here. And if you want to subscribe to the channel right now, click my face right here and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching and peace.